Done. Good morning. And welcome everybody. Um, I'm just uh, just get, getting everybody set up here. So we've got everybody joining us from Talkie Girls Grammar School here. And we've also got you uh, joining us from YouTube. So if anyone's from Talkie Girls Grammar, if, if you've got a problem with the connection there, then let the connection, if you've got a problem with that, then just go to the Phone Kitchen YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube this morning, good morning as well. And uh, if you've got any comments you want to put on there from YouTube, just put those comments on the bottom. If you're watching us from Talkie Girls Grammar, if you want to put your comments along the side there at Teams. So we're live streaming this simultaneously, both on Teams to uh, Talkie Girls Grammar School and to YouTube um, there to um, the rest of the world. So. Um, uh, uh, anyone got any questions? Like I say, if you want to put them, if you're at Talking Girls Grammar, put them down the side. If you want to put them, if you're at YouTube, if you want to put those along the bottom. Okay, uh, I think we're nearly ready to go. Let's give it a couple of minutes for everyone else to join us. There we go. Uh, let's see who we got. Uh, we got two or three people joining us. Yep, straight onto YouTube. Some of us, uh, yep, had the class is filling up at Talking Girls Grammar. We're nearly there, ready to go. And then we'll go through the setup and what we're cooking today. So today is all about um, making pizza dough. We're making a yeast bread pizza dough. And we're also going to be making some wonderful little dough balls, garlic dough balls to go with that today. Because the main thing we're looking at today is going to be biological raising agents. Um, so we're going to be looking at those, how they work, how we can put those into our bread, what they do in our breads, how they function. Um, so that's a big thing today. We're also going to be doing, making, see, looking at a little bit about sauce and how you make your sauces as well with the tomatoes um, that you want to go in there. So let's see if we've got any questions before we start. Let's have a look there. Any questions from anybody before we begin? Uh, so uh, just a couple of questions there we have is, um, I haven't got any strong uh, bread flour. Can I use uh, plain? Yep, I'm going to show you lots of different alternatives today because obviously we're in a lockdown larger situation so uh in that case we can use some alternatives for everything and i'll show you those alternatives again but yeah plain flour will work uh if you haven't got any strong uh bread flour for that one um i haven't got any natural yeast um can i use fast action yeast yep again that's uh that's absolutely fine we can go with those ones and again i'll show you some alternatives as we go through that one all right we need to look as though we're there the class is ready to go um on uh talking girls grammar and it looks like we're ready to go uh, on YouTube as well. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get going now then. Um, so uh, today, like I say, we're going to be making uh, these uh, pizza dough balls. I'm going to go through the recipe for you. Some of you, if you're watching this Talkie Girls Grammar, you've got the recipe already um, on there. If you're watching it on YouTube, you may have already got the recipe through social media as well. Um, but don't worry if you haven't, because it will be going through it step by step on the slides here. For the key knife, you know we're using a Hodder education package, which is what we use in school as part of our uh, presentation of slides. Okay, um, so so let's get started. What do we? What are the learning objectives for today? I just briefly touched on them, but I'm just going to go through those with you as well to this morning um, as uh, today. The learning objectives are today to just dem demonstrate how we're going to make a sauce. I'm going to quickly show you how to make a sauce later on. But uh, I want you to practice your knife skills. So we're going to be using cutting up uh, onions today, showing you how to do those. Can we refresh on that? Um, and but the most important thing is to understand a biological raising agent. That's the big part of what today is all about. Understand what a biological raising agent does. Uh, we'll also touch a little bit on some food science on proteins and gluten and gluten development because I like to touch on that whenever we're using flour. And um, we'll bring in a little bit of food science there um, about browning, uh, etc. as well. So um, lots to get through today. Now, before we begin, um, we need to get ourselves ready. We need to get our areas ready. And we need to get all our equipment and ingredients ready. So uh, as we start every lesson, let's get uh, ready with Hattie. So here we have H -A -T -T -I -E. Hattie, H-A-T-T-I-E. And what does that stand for? Well, it's a good way of being able to remember what we need to do um, first thing in the morning. Let me go through each of those parts together. I'm seeing some pictures come up on the screen there of all the ingredients laid out, ready to go. I like that. Well done. Uh, thumbs up to you. That looks brilliant. Well done to you. Um, I love that one. Uh, some pictures already coming in, which is great of all the ingredients for your pizzas um, ready to go. Well done there. Um, so uh, Hattie, what does Hattie stand for? Let me go back over to that. So it's a great way of being able to remember everything you need to get in place before we start to cook. Now, before we start to cook, it's all about playing it safe in the kitchen. So um, if you're cooking at home, um, fabulous. I'd love you to be cooking along with us at home and making comments and questions as we go will be brilliant. Um, but you should always remember that if you're cooking along at home, you need to be, the area needs to be safe. You need to be safe to be cooking. You need to have permission to cook and you need a suitable grown up there um, who to supervise you and take responsibility 
responsibility for you and look after you as well. So make sure you've got a suitable grown up and close at hand to lend a hand um, before we start this one. There's some more disclaimer at the bottom there on the YouTube too as well. But um, let's think about ourselves. Let's make sure that we're we're uh, ready to cook. Let's make sure the area is ready to cook and make sure we've got everything to really need. So first one, Hattie H, H is for um, wear a hat or wash uh, or tie your hair back um, and wash your hands. Okay, so um, I know it might seem a little bit weird to be tying your hair back at home when you're cooking, but um, go go with this one. Um, we don't want hair to be going into our food products. We don't want any of that to be happening. So. Um, can we, uh, can we make sure we've uh, tied our hair back if you've got long hair? I haven't got long hair. I don't need to worry about all of that for me. Um, it might be losing hair. Um, so I don't need to worry so much about uh, wearing uh, that for me. Um, but certainly washing hands is really, really important. And as you know, in these weird times that we're living in, even more so that we wash our hands more frequently than normal. So we'll do that one in a moment. Um, wearing an apron. Yep, I've got my apron ready to go. And again, this might seem a little bit weird wearing an apron in your own kitchen, but it's really important there as part of making sure that we're prepared and ready to cook. We don't want any more of those uh, contaminants in our food and we don't. We want to keep ourselves clean and our area clean as well. Um, and coming on to that one, coming at keeping our area clean. Okay, so uh, make sure that the area that you're working in is clean and ready to go as well. So have you uh, anti back down or sanitized or sprayed or washed down your work surfaces? So I've got my work surface which has been washed down, sanitized and ready to go is yours too. So make sure you're where you're working is ready and clean to cook as well. Um, next one, um, next tea is for tray. And tray is a very useful device to have at hand to keep all of the next couple of things on, um, uh, which is the I for ingredients and E for equipment. So if you've got a little tray that can carry all those bits and pieces, so we're gonna go through all of the equipment and all the ingredients with you now. And again, I know we're in a lockdown larder situation, so you might not be able to get hold of all the ingredients. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some alternatives as we go as well. Great. Fabulous. More questions. Uh, let me have a look here. Um, both my parents uh, <laughs> are... Uh, um, Oh, right. So you, yeah, it doesn't need to both both parents. So the questions there it could be parents. It could be older siblings. If you've got um, a brother or sister, maybe who's come, is not at university at the moment, who could be a hand to lend a hand. If they're a, they're a suitable grown up, would be good to supervise as well. Um, so um, fabulous. Uh, that is our Hattie. Let's get ready. Let's do this one together. Any more questions coming in this morning? No, no, no. If you're watching YouTube, we'd love to hear where you're joining us from um, down here in Devon. Not su sunny Devon, but we have no snow down here. I'm just looking out across the um, the estuary here um, in Devon over the rolling hills and there's no snow yet, but um, it's certainly not a sunny Devon this morning. But we'd love to know where you're joining us from uh, if you're watching YouTube. OK, so let's get ready to go. The first thing we need to do is we need to get our hands washed and our aprons on. So I'm just going to roll my sleeves up. Um, What's this one? Uh, my older brother is not. My older brother's not a suitable grown up. Okay, well, if your brother's not a suitable grown up, then uh, try going and find somebody who who might be more suitable. Right. So I'm just rolling my sleeves up, and then I'm going to go go over, and we're going to go and wash uh, my hands over here. So we're just going to um, turn the cameras around to my kitchen. Uh, there we go. Um, let's move that one around to my kitchen. There, fabulous. And uh, let's go round and. Come with me. Um, okay, so um, we're just going to come around. I'm just going to move you around here. There we go. Uh, move you around to the kitchen here. Fabulous if you're watching this. And we move this one over here. Okay, so um, we're over at the kitchen here. And the most important thing we need to do now is we need to get our hands washed at this stage. So we're just going to get our all our hands washed. Um, now, uh, we're going to need some soap here. So I've got some soap. Nice soapy soap. And um, we need to make sure we're washing our hands properly. So that's the rubbing the hands together as you might obviously be doing normally. But then as well as washing, rubbing our hands together, we need to make sure we're going inside the nails, both sides there, backwards and forwards, around where the nails are. Thumbs, don't forget those thumbs. Don't forget the back of the hands, the wrists, and then the back, back of the fingers there. Properly washing our hands until we've got soap lathered all over ourselves. Then we need to make sure we've got some um, hot water. We can then wash those hands down again, rub them. So I'm just going to rub, rub my hands there, uh, but then fingers, fingers, back of hands, back of hands, thumbs, thumbs, wrists, wrists, all the way round through it. Now, as you know, um, what is the what should you be wa uh, washing your hands for? Well, um, 
when you're washing your hands, as you probably know already from uh, it been going the last year, it's 20 seconds is how long you need to be washing your hands for. So 20 seconds, and easy way to remember that. Happy birthday twice. Um, it's our birthday too, my birthday too. Uh, happy birthday twice, and there's enough time to be washing your hands today are nice and clean. So let's get those dried off. Just gonna get dry my hands off there. And just for added precaution, I'm just gonna um, put, in, put some um, alcohol gel on there as well this morning so we are properly properly clean there we go all lovely to go clean hands fabulous um actually while we're here i'm just going to grab some basil off the windowsill here um for later on okay let's go back to uh, the work area fabulous um let's go back here all right um so i'm just going to just grab some some basil while i was there um, from the windowsill um, to use in, in our pizzas as well. Um, let me grab my whites as well. Now I'm going to be wearing my apron this morning, um, so let me get my apron on. But as well as my apron, I'm going to be putting my um, whites on as well. So here we go. I'm just going to nice and clean and washed so we can properly protect it there. If you can be getting your apron on at the same time, that would be fabulous. Um, uh, it's all you're always so messy in the kitchen. I've got all sorts of comments going down there. Why? Uh, <laughs> uh, always so messy. Well, I tell you what, we'll go through everything step by step. So hopefully you don't make too much of a mess. Uh, OK, we're carrying on here. Um, let's get ourselves ready now. We're nearly, nearly there. We're just going to just move the camera there so you can see where we're up to. Uh, OK, so I'm just going to get my my sleeves rolled up again. And hopefully, like I say, you're getting yourselves ready now. You're washing your hands. You're getting your hair tied back if you need to. Maybe you're putting a hat on instead of tying your hair back. That's absolutely fine. Um, and we're just going to get ourselves ready to go. I'm just wearing, oh, it's Food Teacher Centre. This is the Association of Food Teachers. It's a forum for food teachers across the country there. I'm just going to wear my apron as well. There we go. Uh, put that one on. Fabulous. So we're all nearly ready to go. So we've got ourselves um ready to now we've got our areas ready um we now need to go through the equipment and ingredients that you're going to might need for today and like i say i'll go through some alternatives for you as well so you've got some alternatives so you know um uh, other things that you can be getting if, if we can't get hold of all of it because we're saying we're, not, we're in a lockdown larger situation and i understand that so we'll look at that one so let's go through that first of all let's go through ingredients first and then we'll go through equipment so I'm um, up on the slide here again. I'll just uh, go into the next slide there for you. Uh, ingredients. So um, on the ingredients here, let me just move that camera around slightly so you can see that better. There we go. Um, so on the ingredients here, strong bread flour. Now I've said about strong bread flour, but somebody's already said today this morning they haven't got strong bread flour. So can they use a plain flour? Absolutely, they can use a plain flour instead. That would work just as well. Um, I'm going to be using a um, a strong uh, bread flour today. Um, there we are, my, my strong bread flour. You can see there's a strong bread flour on there. Um, that's what I'm going to be using today. But you could you could alternatively use a um, plain flour. So we've got a plain flour there that would work. And maybe your gluten intolerance. So as someone who's seen that, um, you can use um, a free from flour. There we go, it's a free from flour there. Um, you could use that one. Uh, that's uh, without the gluten. We'll talk a little bit about that there. But then I'd probably put in something like a xanthan gum if you're doing that, just to add a little bit more protein to it if you were, um, for your bread making, if that were the case. Um, right, so that's the, the flour sorted. So we're going with a, a strong bread flour if you can with that one. But I say the options there if you can't are, are there. Um, we're going to go with some warm water. We're looking at 150 millilitres of warm water. Uh, where are we? 150 millilitres. Uh, there we go, 150 millilitres on there. So we're just going to be getting 150 millilitres of water in there. I'll measure that out with spoons for you. This is uh, warm water from the tap. Okay, so just tap warm water will be fine. Um, a sachet of dried yeast or 70 grams of mature um, stars a day. Yes, now, uh, what does that mean? We've had a few questions this morning already about this starter dough. What is a starter dough? How does it work? What, um, what do we do to make that one? Right, so um, we're going to be using uh, a yeast, first of all, we've got uh, nothing else, uh, a fast action dried yeast. Okay, so I've got some fast action dried yeast there. Um, this will suffice, but I know, and if you looked at some of my previous videos, some of you have made a, a starter, um, a sourdough starter. 
which is like a live yeast, which you've grown during lockdown. If you look back through my previous videos, you can see how to do one of those and how to make your own sourdough. So I have got my, here we go, my lockdown sourdough starter. Now I started this one a year ago, so she's been maturing well. And she's in here, and we'll explain a little bit about her. And she does smell very, very sour in there. Um, but this is my sourdough starter, and we'll talk a little bit more about her in a minute and how to make that one. So if you've got sourdough starter, um, which is a, a live action yeast, um, that would be fabulous. You can use that one. You'll need 10 times the amount. So instead of seven grams, you're gonna need 70 grams. Um, it also, though, does take 10 times the amount of time to mature, generally speaking, or to, to prove and uh, make our bread rise up. So you're looking at, I tend to leave the breads overnight in maybe an airing cupboard or somewhere warm, uh, or you can leave it for the entire day. So that does take a lot longer. Obviously, the fast action yeast, fast action yeast is a lot faster. Um, that's only going to take yourself, um, well, you could probably do this one in half an hour with a with, uh, fast action yeast. So we'll look at different types of yeast. You can get free yeast from um, a lot of supermarkets. We'll do that one if you've got a baking section. Go to the baking section and say, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to do some baking. Have you got any fresh yeast we can have? They'll give you fresh yeast in blocks. Um, and it'll come in a little bit, bit of block and you get into your food as well. Um, and that works really, really well as, a, as an alternative to fast action yeast. So there's a freebie there. Um, there's a freebie you can make. So to make sourdough, all you need is tap water and flour um, because you catch your yeast that's all around us. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so there's a lot of um, options there you can use as alternatives to cook when you're cooking there. So uh, fast action yeast. Um, which comes in lots of in those little packets, um, in the big packets. We've got a big packet here of proper uh, Italian uh, yeast, and so uh, and we'll talk and say what it looks like. But um, we're looking at a little uh, sort of powder type of yeast there, you can see there. Um, uh, so, whichever option you've got there, we're going to go down with whatever you've got to lock down the situations. Um, some olive oil, I've got a little bit of um, olive oil there, I've got some extra virgin olive oil, just a little piece of a little bit in there. Um, and then we've got a little bit of sugar. So I've got a little bit of sugar there just to go in. Um, we've got there, if you've got olive oil, vegetable oil, yeah, that will be fine. Um, we've got a pinch of salt. So I'm just gonna, I've got my salt there, a little bit of salt to go into that one. Um, along with the salt, we've got um, some onions. So I've got some some onions there. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not gonna try and juggle because I'm rubbish at juggling. Um, but we've got some uh, onions there ready to go. Um, now, if you haven't got onions, we can use uh, pre-cut onions. You might be able, you might be done with some, um, you know, some frozen onions. So we could use frozen onions um, if you haven't got fresh onions. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, we'll talk about how you can add those to it. As well as the onions, we've got some garlic. So uh, we've got some fresh garlic there, a uh, lovely piece of uh, fresh garlic there. But again, if you haven't got fresh garlic, then you might be able to use, um, instead, you could use some frozen garlic. So again, we're just trying to give you lots of different options here um, because different people can get hold of different ingredients. And that depends on where you are and what the shops are selling, etc. cetera. Um, some chopped tomatoes. So I've got um, half a can of chopped tomatoes there, but I'm gonna also show you how to chop some tomato, which will be quite interesting. Make your own uh, little sauce there. Um, you can use um, a tomato paste as well. So I've got um, a puree type uh, piece there, but I mean, I could use um, some of this, which is like a passata, um, which is a cooked off, uh, chopped up tomatoes already. And I'll show you how to do some of that as well. But, and a mixture of that, this is for your topping to your pizzas. So again, we can have a bit of a play there. Um, let's have a look at what else we've got there. Some chopped herbs. So I've suggested some chopped or, or, or oregano, or oregano, uh, if you're from uh, across the water, uh, right, uh, basil, parsley, and you just saw there, I've just got some fresh one from my windowsill there. Um, you can use fresh, um, if you haven't got fresh, um, we can, we've got some fresh parsley here as well. There we go, grab some of that. I just got side there, some fresh parsley as well. If you haven't got fresh parsley and uh, fresh basil, um, then then dried would be would be fine. Um, here we go. It's got some dried parsley there. We can use a little bit of dried parsley in that one as well. We'll go with what you've got. All right. Um, so don't 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 worry yourself about that. Uh, all right. So as well as herbs, oh, and we're going to talk garlic as well. You could if you, cut, if you haven't got frozen garlic and you haven't got fresh garlic. I mean, you could use there, there's some garlic granules, garlic uh, granules there in there. So we've got dried dried garlic granules. We've got. Um, 
What other things have we got in here? Um, some cheese and some butter. So yeah, um, uh, you can use, uh, again, you can use, depending on whether you're vegan or not, or if you're going to be January or well, whatever your preference might be, we can go with the standard uh, dairy butter, um, or if you want to, which I'm gonna be using today, I'm gonna to be using a plant-based um, alternative. So plant-based vegan alternative uh, as well. So um, you can use a plant-based, and the same with the cheese as well. Um, oh, where's the cheese? There it is. I'm just grab, grab that cheese. So as well as that with the cheese, we've got, we can go with either um, a, a dairy cheese or, or a non-dairy cheese. That would be fine. Oops. Just get that one out. Sorry. Here we are. Still with it. Still with it. Just trying to get all my cheese out. There we go. From the fridge there. So, um... So we've got some different sorts of cheese. We've got a standard dairy cheese. Um, there we go, block of cheese you can use uh, there. Or if you don't want to, we've got some, some flavoured block there, vegan cheese, um, which we're, we can use as well. And just uh, we can use some of that into it and grate that in there as well. OK, so talking about grating, let's get on to equipment that you're going to need. Um, and again, we'll show you some alternatives to these equipment as we go as well. So let's quickly go through the equipment as well that you're going to need for today. Um, and while I'm doing this, you can just get everything ready and get your area prepped up with all these ingredients and all this equipment out. So equipment, let's have a look at the equipment we've got for today. Today's equipment, some scales. So I've got myself some scales, but again, don't worry if you haven't got scales because I will measure everything out with you and we can do it in spoons. We can go through and use sort of tablespoons and teaspoons today and, and that will be fine. So, so don't worry about that. We'll work through it together. We'll cook along together with today's today. Um, some mixing bowls, yep. Yeah, my mixing bowls here ready to go. Um, as well as my mixing bowls, um, I've got uh, there and um, some, some so got fork sharp knife, chopping boards. Um, we've got, uh, yes, chopping board. You've seen my chopping board. Uh, knives and spoons. So I'm going to be using a couple of knives today. I'm using some, some flat knives, some, some sharper knives. So uh, we'll talk about what that is. That's a pairing knife, a smaller one, and a chef's cook knife. And we'll talk about the difference of those. Um, as well as knives, chopping boards, uh, we've got a frying pan. Yeah, that's over there on the side, and we'll come to that in a moment. I've got a frying pan ready to go. A saucepan's also ready to go over there in the kitchen, and we'll turn around and have a look at that in a moment. And as well as that, we've got a couple of other bits and pieces. We've got a tea towel. Yeah, we've got a, a tea towel here. Here is my tea towel, ready to go. Nice clean tea towel, but you can use some clean film if you haven't got a clean tea towel close to hand. That will do fine. Um, so, you yeah, either either on that one. Uh, what else have we got here? Some greaseproof paper. It's all, all here stacked up in front, but I'm just going to reach over and grab it for you. Uh, there it is. There it is, greaseproof paper, ready to go. I'm going to chop that one up, so you probably might need some scissors as well to go with that one. And then we've got um, a cheese grater, black cheese that we started with. And here's my, my cheese grater. There we go, cheese grater. Um, but again, if you haven't got a cheese grater, we will show you some alternatives. We will keep showing you all the different alternatives that you can use as we're going along today. Okay, so you should be ready now. We've got yourself um, yourself ready, all your ingredients ready, and all your equipment ready. Are we ready to begin? Um, has everybody got everything they need? Great, fabulous. Let's get started then. Um, we're gonna start making our yeast pizza breads and dough balls. Okay, um, there we go. Yeasty breads and dough balls. Uh, okay, uh, there we go, you see that, there we go. Right. Uh, Dental all ingredients. I'm going to get them later and I'm cooking later. I'm watching now and cooking later. Yeah, that's fabulous. So it's recorded both. Uh, today's being recorded on uh, YouTube. So it'll be available to watch afterwards on YouTube if you're not able to cook today uh, or cook right now. And the same is true for Talkie Girls Grammar School. Um, it's being recorded on Teams. So you can watch back uh, that as well. So you can um, either watch back through Teams um, or you can. Um, you can watch back through YouTube, whichever you fancy. All right, so let's get started, everyone. Let's get started with our making. I'm going to show you the recipe behind me, which we're going to be going through step by step together. Take everyone through this one um, a little bit at a time. So we'll all work together and we'll do this as a live cook along for those that are cooking along with us this morning. Okay, here is the, the recipe. Let's uh, show you the recipe at the board there. And you've got you've probably seen this recipe already, but just so you've got this recipe in front of you. And we'll go through this one with you step by step. 
Uh, first thing is strong bread flour. Now we're going to be going with 350 grams of strong bread flour. It seems a lot of strong bread flour, but don't worry, that will be absolutely fine. So um, I've got my scales ready. I'm going to measure this out with you. So you've got the, you've got it along with me at the same time. So let's uh, do this one. Let's measure it out. We'll use some spoons. I've got spoons. I've got my flour, and we'll measure out how much is 350 grams of bread flour. I'm going to open up my bread for you and so we'll do this one all together so you all know what you're doing okay there's my bread flour and let's uh let's go into this one we're using 350 grams so heat tablespoons one two three four five six Six is about 100 grams, that's right, six, 100 grams exactly, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that's 200, and we need uh, 12, oh, quite a lot in here, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, there we go, I've got 20, 21, one more, oh, two more. That's it. There we go. So 22, 23 tablespoons of flour will give you your 350 grams uh, you roughly you need in there. So if you haven't got scales, don't worry, we can still go with that. So that's my flour all sorted out. That's the first ingredients on the bed and step one there. The next thing is we need to make a well. So what is a well? A well is a hole inside one ingredient for another ingredient to go inside. Okay, so we're gonna do, do that in three terms, that's what we're gonna be calling a wet. So I've got my uh, flour there. Let me just uh, move the cameras down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And you can have a look there. Let me just zoom in so you can see. There we go. Um, so I've got my flour there in the middle of my board. And what I'm gonna do there, I'm now going to make a well in the middle. So I'm just gonna get my fingers and make a hole in the middle of that. We're going to get a little bit, little bit messy today. There we go. A hole in the middle. So I've just used my fingers to make a hole in the middle, make a little well in the middle. We don't need to worry about our hands because we washed our hands beforehand. Now, into this well, we're going to be putting a few little ingredients, okay? Um, so the first ingredient we're going to be putting in there is we're going to be putting in there some uh, yeast and some warm water, okay? So we're going to use yeast, yeast and warm water, two things going into this well. So um, I'm assuming most of you are probably going to go with... Um, a, uh, probably going to go with a faster action yeast. So we'll put in a little bit of fast action yeast. And remember, the warm water is just going to be for. Uh, there we go. The warm water is just going to be for um, the, the the yeast, and that is just tap water. Okay. Um, so when we put that one in, we're going to be put, putting in that. But we're going to be putting in it gradually. Really important that we put this one in gradually. Now, some of you, like I say, will be using. Here's my sourdough. This is what sourdough looks like. And there are some bubbly, it's a bubbly old consistency. Um, if you want to put in this in, you're putting seven, seven grams in there. We're not going to be putting seven grams in there, but so I'll talk about what is going on with that yeast in a moment. Um, but uh, we're going to be putting in there um, some fast action yeast like you. So here is my fast action yeast. I'll just grab that one here. I'm just going to pour in my fast action yeast. Now, if you're using a big packet of yeast, I showed you a big one earlier, then you're looking about a tea, tea, teaspoon's worth. So that's a small, small spoon. So you want to be using about a teaspoon's worth, which is that one, to go in there. But I'm just going to use a whole of one of these pack, packets there. You can see a fast action dried yeast there. I'm just going to pour all of one of those packets in to the center. And there it goes. The yeast is in there. Now, Yeast is a microorganism, and as such, it needs uh, uh, something to eat, it needs something to drink, and then it's gonna do amazing things for us. Um, so what we're gonna do with our yeast now is we're gonna give it something to eat and something to drink. Let's start with something to drink. 
Now I did say we need to be uh, be putting in some warm water. So I've got some some warm water there, and we're looking at 150 grams of warm water. Sorry, 150 <coughs> milliliters of warm water. So let me just measure that one out for you, um, and I'll tell you how many teaspoons that's worth as well in a minute for you, so you know you know that one for for you. Let's have a look. 150. We're we'll do this one slowly. So we're looking at 150 milliliters of water, warm water, and we're going to be pouring that one in slowly. There we go, in it goes. So how warm is warm? There we go, it's just filling up my well. How warm is warm? Well, warm it should be about like a bath, a comfortable bath, um, not too hot, not too cold. We want to give it something that we don't want to be killing it by putting it to make it this microorganisms by making it too hot. So what we're going to do is we just put in there some warm water for it. So drink, give it some moisture in there. Um, so we've got some moisture. Now we're going to give it something to um, to eat in with the dried yeast. We're going to be putting in there a little teaspoon of sugar. So I've got a little bit of sugar here. And again, teaspoons, it's those little small ones. So we're going to use a little teaspoon there of sugar. In we go with our teaspoon of sugar. We don't need to put sugar into this. It's quite, there's enough uh, complex sugars called polysaccharides in there and through the starch that's in found in the flour. But we're just going to speed up the process. So we don't actually need to, but I'm just putting a little bit in there just to speed up that process there. So we've got a little bit of sugar in there. Um, and then uh, look, together with the, the sugar, um, which again, which you don't need, it is, is, is an optional one. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there. Okay, so we're putting some fat in there as well. So here's my olive oil. And we're going to be putting in there, again, one teaspoon's worth of the olive oil there. So here it goes. So just a teaspoon's worth of olive oil in there. A little bit generous on the teaspoon there. Um, but in that goes as well. So um, if you're thinking about what you like to eat, what do, what do you like to eat? If you've given any kind of option of what you wanted to eat, um, you'd probably be thinking of something along the lines of uh, something with fatty or sugary foods if I give you an ultimate option of a, like a treat. So what we've got here is we've got fat and sugar for this microorganism. And we're now going to uh, go with this. We're going to add with this, we've added some moisture, so it's got something to drink as well. And what we're going to do now, we're going to stir all this up and give it an option to get around everything. Okay, so let's go back into So we've got there, you can say our, um, we've got in there our yeast. We've got in there the warm water. We've got in there olive oil. We've got in there sugar. Okay, so that's all in there ready to go. We're now going to stir all of this up. And before we do that, we're going to add one more ingredient, and that is a little pinch of salt. Now, it's important here when we when we talk about this. I'll just go back to myself. Oops. Okay. Um, so it's important here when we're talking about the salt that we don't get the salt onto the yeast. So we're going to put the salt down the side of the the, uh, the actual bowl here because we don't want any of that salt to get on top. What happens if we get the salt on top? It's, it's got a chance that it might actually uh, kill the, the yeast and we don't want to be doing that. So we want to, we want the salt in there. It's going to help to activate uh, our gluten, but we don't want the salt to actually be getting on top of our uh, yeast. So let's put a little bit of salt down the side there. There we go, there's our bowl. I'm just going to put that one just down the side there. So where's my salt bowl? There we go. We're just going to put the salt inside. Here it is. A little bit of salt. It's just going to go on the side there. And again, we're looking at a little pinch of salt on there. Fabulous. Uh, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gradually bring all of this together. So I'm just going to use a little fork here. And I'm just going to gradually bring this one. If you've got a wooden spoon, that would work well. But I'm just going to gradually bring all of this flour into the well and bring it all together. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just now mix all of these together. And hopefully, you say we're doing this together at home. I'm just going to mix all of that together. Okay, all of that. And we're going to start to make our dough. Now, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about food science. We go like this because I love to talk with. Whenever we talk about liquids and making doughs, there's always a lot that I like to talk about, and that is the, the stickiness that is in there. Here we go. You can see that's all starting to come together. It's all starting to stick together. Hopefully yours is starting to stick together as well. There we go. Let's move that one off. It's all just starting to stick in together, or what we call in cooking terms, binding together. It's all binding together. Good. 
Now, we actually need a little bit more warm water. So I've got a little bit more warm water just to add to build it into gradually bring that one together. So I'm going to add a little bit more warm water. Not too much. A tablespoon's worth. Just going to gradually bring all of that flour and yeast. And don't worry about the salt now getting on it because it's now all mixed in together. That's going to be okay. That's not going to be directly on top of our yeast. So I'm going to just add a little bit more in there. One more tablespoon. And in that goes that warm water, and you're just going to bring all of this one together. Don't be tempted. Um, don't be tempted. Oops. Uh, don't be tempted to add too much water. You can always um, gradually add a little bit more water. If you put too much water in to start with, you're going to end up um, with a really wet dough. Now, there are some breads that do have a wet dough. Chia batter uh, we have a really wet dough to that one. Well, we don't want a particularly wet dough for our pizzas here. So just gradually, if you need to bring it in, it should just form into a dough. Just gradually uh, bring, bring that one together. If you need to add a little bit more um, water, you can do, and gradually bring this one into a dough ball. But don't make it too wet, like I say. You don't want to... It's easy to add more water. It's quite hard to take the water out of the dough there. Okay. Here we go. So that's nearly come together. So you just should be able to get a nice clean side to your bowl. So if you stir that one so the, the, the water comes away from the bowl there and you've got a nice clean side to your bowl. There we go. I'm just going to keep stirring that one together. Again, if you've got a wooden spoon, you can do it with a wooden spoon, but I'm just trying to use equipment that you might have if you... You're limited. We're not in school at the moment, so limited equipment that you might have at home, so you might have before. Okay, so that's come together into a nice big dough ball into the middle of my bowl. And what's happened is it's actually cleaned the sides of my bowl there. I'm going to show you how that looks. There we go. I'm going to work that on. Let's show it off the camera there. There we go. So it's just come away, and you can see how that's cleaned the sides of my bowl there. That's where we want to be going out to for our bread dough. And that takes us all the way up to number five. We're about halfway through um, the, the making of this one. Now, um, we'll talk about we'll talk about we'll talk about the, um, the different types of yeast and what's going on in this while we get on to the next part. Okay, just gonna stir that one together. Right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn out the dough onto this work surface now. So what I would suggest you want to do is you get a little bit of the extra flour, a little bit of the flour here, and we're gonna, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm sticking the, the photos there that are coming in of the bread dough, so that's a great consistency. So what we need to do now, put a little bit of flour on your work surface. I'm just sprinkling a little bit of flour on my work surface here. I'm gonna, got some flour on my hands, so let's put a little bit of flour on my hands as well. So a little bit to dust your work surface with. You might have a flour dredger. Um, uh, at home. We know we got them at school. We haven't got them here, so I'm just going to sprinkle this on the top with my fingers. I've got a little bit on my hand as well. I'm going to get that dough out of the bowl, and I'm going to place that on the work surface now. And we're going to do the next part, which is kneading. I'm going to knead all of this together, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on, um, both in the kneading and while we're leading it and leading it to prove. So um, here we have let me show the camera to you and show you what this looks like on the board. So let me move the cameras down so you can see what mine looks like. There we go. Perfect. You can see that one on the board there as well. Good. So you can see there what's going on. Let me just move that one camera slightly further out. Perfect. You see that there? So we've got our bread dough now on our work surface. There's a little bit of flour on the work surface as well. And we're now just going to get this together and work this. One. And we're going to knead this one together. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of being able to knead it. What happens when we knead it? We're going to talk about the, um, the a little bit about science here. Now, if you get sticky fingers, just a little bit of flour in there, rub those two together, will be absolutely fine. Let me go and grab you. What we're going to be doing next. We're going to be making a bread dough. Now, there we go. Um, so I've got some bread here, here, some, some nice 
fresh bread. And I'm going to the homemade bread there. And I'm going to talk to you about how we can get from this to that. To do that, we're going to need to do two things. The first thing we're going to need to do, <laughs> we're going to need to do, is knead. So we're going to push in and then fold back. Okay, you've probably done this plenty of times before, but I'm going to just show you what to do. We're using the palm of our hands, and we're using like the heel of the palm of our hands, which is this part here. Can you see that one on the camera there? Hopefully you can, yeah. So the heel of the palm of my hands, which is just this little part here. And what we're going to do is we're going to push into it, and then we're rolling back. Okay, so we're pushing into it, and we're rolling back. If your board needs a little bit more flour, that's fine. We can put a little bit more flour on there for you. Okay, so it doesn't stick, but we're roll, pushing into it. We're really pushing into it. And we're going to be making it very, very sticky and stretchy. Now, you probably know this already, but we are going to be creating something that is elastic and plastic in here. Something stretchy and here we go, very, very stretchy um, in here. Uh, stretchy as a balloon, as stretchy as um, bubble gum might be. It's really stretchy product. Now, it's very sticky, stretchy product. Does anyone know what that is? Let's have a have a look. Who's gonna be fastest there? Can anyone, you can leave a message there on YouTube. You can leave a message on Teams. What do you think this stuff is that we're gonna be um, creating when we need our bread? That means we're putting, you see what we're doing here is we need it, we're stretching into it and we're pushing into it. Does anyone know? Let's have a look. Have a look on comments there. Does anyone know what is being created? All right, I'll give you a clue. It's very gluey, okay? But it's not. So it's not. A, it's not. It's not a glue stick. Got some glue stick there. It's not a glue stick, but it is very, very gluey. Anyone know? Gluten, perfect, well done, gluten. So what we're gonna be doing is, we, by kneading, we're creating gluten. What we're doing is we're combining two proteins that are already in our flour, and we're making a new one. So the two proteins that are in our flour, and we'll talk about this at GCSE a little bit more, are gliadine and glutenin. Now, one is really, really stretchy, like I said, like a balloon. There's my balloon, stretchy balloon. One of them is like that. One is very, very, so that's what we call stretchy, it's elastic. And one of them has got the properties of it's very, very plastic. Okay, so um, here we go. Can you see there my slime there, um, which what I can do is I can mold it into different shapes and it will go back to the original shape. So we got plastic and elastic. Now we combine those two together by doing putting all of this energy from ourselves. We're going to put all of this kinesthetic energy, okay, we're doing loads of energy in from ourselves, all the physical um, energy from me. We're giving ourselves a workout, giving our bread a workout. It's getting a bit sticky. I'm just going to put a bit more flour on my work surface and on my hands. So I work this one and I'm pushing in and rolling back and pushing in and then rolling back. I'm pushing it, and each as I'm doing this, I say I'm putting loads of energy in, and that energy is helping us to combine that, along with the water that's in there, the moisture, combine the gliadin and gluten in into this new thing called gluten. And in fact, gluten and glue sticks both share the first bit of their name. It comes from, um, it derives from a Latin word to actually mean sticky. Okay, so um, that's it. Now, an easy way to remember gluten is that. Um, Back in the olden days, I suppose, with the grown-ups we used to be at school, we used to actually have glue in tins. <laughs> yeah, like a, we have big tins of sticky glue. Anyway, this is glue tin we're developing here. Um, so that's what we are doing, something stretchy and elastic. Perfect. Now, um, there are a few ways you can do this one. You can do it one-handed, and I've got, actually got one hand behind my back here. Just pressing in, so I put all my energy pressing in and rolling it back. Okay, pressing in and rolling it back. Or I could do two hands, so I could do one, two, one, two, one, two. You get into a real motion there. Now there we go. So there's two different ways here. Now I know that uh, Paul Paul Hollywood prefers one hand with one hand behind the back, really pushing in and doing it like that. Where if you're a Mary Berry fan, she prefers to do two hands, and she'll 
roll, press and roll, press and roll. Um, so I don't mind being either either. There you choose whether you're doing a Mary Berry or a Paul Hollywood. Um, we're going to be doing this for about 10 minutes. So I've been doing this for about 10 minutes of uh, kneading here. Really, and what you can see, if I show that up to the camera, that it's got really smooth now. That's really, really smooth um, dough. And not only is it really, really smooth, if I just pull it a little bit, you'll be able to see these strands of stickiness on the top. And that is our gluten. And um, that is the gluten we've got in there. That is that gluten we're doing. And I'm actually using the, 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 board, the board now. I'm actually cleaning the board with the, you see what I'm doing there? I'm actually cleaning the board with the bread dough. As I do this one, it's actually cleaning it. So it's actually saved my washing up here. Just gonna roll that in each time. 10 minutes of doing this. Okay, so we have created ourselves a beautiful, smooth bread dough there. You see that one on the top? That's beautiful, lovely smooth now. What I've just done is I'm just pushing in all of those little wrinkly bits on the bottom there. A lovely smooth top now to our bread dough. So about 10 minutes of there, kneading away. Wonderful. Um, what we're going to do now is going to leave this bread dough to rest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to leave the bread dough to rest. And what we're gonna, this is doing is we call proving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself from my bowl. Now that bowl we used earlier, save ourselves our washing up. I'm going to put my, my, my bread dough into the bowl. Okay, um, you can all see that on the board. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a clean tea towel. I'm just going to cover that over the top and I'm going to leave that somewhere warm. Okay, so what am I, how am I going to do that one? Well, there's a few different ways you can do this um, and that depends on, on what we've got going on at home. Uh, you might have a really posh oven that's got something called a proving drawer in it, which is a drawer that will just keep it at a nice warm temperature for our yeast. Um, I haven't got one of those, and I, I know we haven't got them at school. So what do I do at school? Well, I preheat my oven, and then above it, my oven, I've actually got um, a grill space. Now, I'm not going to switch the grill on. I'll say that again. I'm not going to switch the grill on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the heat from the oven below just go into, radiate into the top of the grill, where it's going to give me a nice warm area. Now, if this is the summer, I uh, say so it's not particularly sunny out there at the moment, uh, down here in sunny, so not, not in a not so sunny Devon. Um, so I would actually, in the summer, I'd leave it outside, but I'm not going to do that. Um, you could put it in an airing cupboard. If you've got an airing cupboard or a, somewhere where it's nice and warm there in the house, I'm going to leave this one now. So I'm going to just go over to my oven and preheat my oven at the same time. Now, to preheat the oven, the oven needs to be preheated to, to um, 210, 220 on this one, gas mark seven. So uh, this is actually going to be preheating my oven and it's going to create a drawer to put this in to prove. So somewhere nice and warm now. So I'm just going to come around, let's go around to my kitchen here. Here we go. I'm just going to go around to my kitchen. Let's go take, take the camera around there as well so you can see what's going on. Okay, let's go around to you. Oops. The kitchen there. I'm going to preheat the oven at the same time. Now, um, I did have this is another way of being able to do it. Um, if you wanted to, instead of being able to knead like that, you might have one of these. This is another way of being able to knead really quickly. Um, this is a KitchenAid, so I could have just put it in there with a bread dough on there, and let that do the kneading process for you. So that's another way of being able to do it. So you could use one of those instead. Now, I'm going to put it somewhere nice and warm. I'm going to switch my oven on to 220. There we go. Now, remember, when using an oven, you're going to need oven gloves. So we'll use those ones a little bit later. So the oven is now on, but I'm not going to put it in the oven. I'm going to put it just in the top here in the grill space where it's going to be nice and warm. And just let the heat from the bottom of the oven to the top. Okay? But I'm not going to switch the grill off. Okay. So let's talk about what's going on there, and uh, there we go. Let's talk about what's going on. What's been going on there? Let's talk about some science here, and let's also then start prepping up the middle area, the middle, the middle of our pieces. Um, so what's happening? Let me talk, talk you through on the board here. So we've got a few things happening for our 
yeast pizza bread dough balls. The first thing we did to recap the learning there we've done already was to look at um, two things, gliadine and glutenin, which are proteins found inside our flour. So they are found inside the flour there. They're already in there. But what we've done is we've added some water to them. So we added a little bit of that water. There we go. We added some of the water to it. And when we added that water to it, we added something very sticky. And that stickiness, when we add water, let's add some water. When we added the water to that, we ended up with glutenin. Sorry, gluten. There we go, there's gluten. G-L-U-T-E-N. And that takes on the two properties that these two had. Remember those two properties? One was really, really elastic. And one was really, really oh, plastic. You see, you can mold it into different shapes and it will go back to those different shapes. So glutenin takes on board both those properties and becomes both elastic and plastic. But why? Why would we want it to become elastic and plastic? What is the point in that? Well, um, let me let me explain. What is the point in um, what is the point in having something that's elastic and plastic? Well, let's come back to our yeast. So let's look at this yeast again. Here we have some of that yeast. So on my hand here, I've got some yeast. And that yeast, we've given it something to eat, we've given it something to drink, we've moved it from a state where it was kind of asleep, dormant, and we've moved it from that dormant stage when we started kneading it and when it's combining it with the water and the, the foods there, when it moved from being dormant to actually being active. And it becomes an active yeast, a fast active yeast, uh, a fast action yeast. And by doing so, well, it's going to start breathing like we are and it's going to start eat, um, feeding and breathing and as it does so breathing inside something that is stretching elastic it's going to start blowing up that stuff that's stretching elastic so our bread dough that was flat is going to start to blow up just like that and you can have lots of these little bubbles of blowing up all the way around. So, you know, like if you have bubble gum and you chew and chew on bubble gum and it gets uh, more and more stretchy, well, you've been kneading and kneading and kneading that gluten becomes so it becomes more and more stretchy. And now, not you blowing bubbles, but the yeast is going to start blowing these little bubbles of carbon dioxide, this gas, carbon dioxide into our bread. OK, and that is going to make our bread rise. Don't believe me. Have a look at a loaf of bread. So this is some fresh bread here. And if you look very closely, you can see all of those little bubbles inside the bread. And those bubbles are carbon dioxide bubbles that have been created by the yeast. And the outside of the bubbles, that stretching elastic stuff, is called gluten. So um, we've got a few things going on again there. So we've not only got a gluten being made, but we have got CO2. So we've got yeast. And then we're going to give it some moisture. something to feed on, some time, it's now got time, we've left it to prove, and we're going to give it the right temperature, we're giving it the right temperature, and what's going to happen is it's going to produce CO2 or carbon dioxide and that is going to blow up our bread and make our bread um, bigger and that's the principle of a bread dough that's what's going on here with a uh, bread dough using a biological raising agent and why do we call it biological because the yeast is a microorganism a teeny tiny little organism how small is that organism well if i was to get one of my hairs and put it inside the yeast I would be able to line up 15 yeast on the end of my hair. Can you see that there? You see, 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 see. 
No, I didn't really pick my hair because that's not right. We don't want cross contamination in our food, but that's how teeny tiny small they would have been um, to get into our bread. Those little yeast, those biological raising agents, those um, little microorganisms. Um, now, don't worry about um, them be eating live microorganisms because when we put them in the oven, um, obviously they would have done their business then, they would have put, done the CO2 in them, and they won't be there any longer when we come to eat them. They'll be, we'll denature them. Um, uh, so, little microorganisms, and this is what we call biological raising agents. Okay, that's how we make our bread doughs. And we're gonna use the same bread dough for our uh, dough balls, but we're gonna take a little bit off that one when we come to making our pizzas. Fabulous. Uh, right, um, right, just getting some water. Good, okay, just make sure you're all hydrated at the moment. Someone's just having a drink while they li listen to me. That's absolutely fine. A little bit of food science in there as well. Um, okay, so we're gonna leave that one to, now you can let that one prove for as long as you, you can uh, on that one, um, to obviously blow up your bread, make it rise, double it in if you can. We haven't got quite that time today, but we're gonna leave it for about half an hour or so um, to, do, to do today. But if you can leave it for an hour, Brilliant. Um, and that one at the moment is proving away. So what's happening in there? Oh, yeah. Lovely picture of your bread ready to prove there. Wonderful. Like that picture. So if you get that covered now and put that one uh, somewhere warm for the next half an hour while we work on the centre of your um, pizzas, the toppings to your pizzas, that would be great. Um, that's good. Some nice pictures coming in there of some of the bread doughs before we start to leave them to prove which is when they, they'll be breathing into our bread CO2. Now, an interesting fact here as well, um, when, they, uh, when they're breathing in, they're also excreting what we call going to the toilet. Um, but when they're excreting, they're excreting alcohol into our bread, into our bread dough. And that's what kind of gives it that really nice taste to it. Um, obviously, again, you don't need to worry about um, drinking alcohol from this because the alcohol uh, when we get to cooking it later on and put it in the oven, as well as uh, get, getting rid of the yeast um, or, or <laughs> denaturing the yeast, um, uh, the, the yeast will be dead. Um, but as well as that, the alcohol will um, disappear in the oven. It will just evaporate. Okay. But that's what kind of gives us the flavour. So uh, that comes to how you make um, beer. If you think about that, you might have heard that you need yeast to make alcoholic drinks. The same sort of thing happens there. And they put sugar and yeast and liquids together, and that's how they make things like beer. Um, interestingly, now, if you didn't believe me that there are the yeast in there, I've got my little sourdough here. I'm just going to show you there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. Let's zoom in on my sourdough so you can see. I just zoom in a little bit on there. Hopefully you can see as well. I'm going to zoom in as much as I can. You should be able to see in amongst my sourdough there, a tiny little bubbles in there. And these bubbles are created, they're the carbon dioxide. This is a sourdough there. And the bubbles in there are actually being created by, can you see it in there? It's just about. That is my sourdough. That's my natural. Now, how do I make a sourdough? There is a video all about making the sourdough so that you can see it on YouTube. Um, but you can make your own sourdough yeast um, at, for nothing. It's just if you've got some flour in the back of the cupboard and tap water, you just need time. And you put equal quantities of flour and water into a jar because there's naturally occurring yeast all around us. Um, you put it into a jar, you stir it, you leave it, you add again, you keep feeding it with a little bit of water, a little bit of flour, you keep feeding it. And what you end up with is something that smells extremely sour. It is uh, very much sour. It tastes very sour as well. Let's have it out there. It tastes, it tastes very much like a sour sweet. It is very, very sour. But that is natural yeast bubbling away in there. And that captures it in there and you can add that in there um, into your food and you can make bread out of that. But like I say, it does take a lot longer than a fast action yeast, okay? Um, so that's my, my sourdough yeast. And again, you can see how to make that one if you want to make, try making one of those at home during lockdown. Um, it's quite fun to try and do and eventually it'll, it's a bit, a bit trial and error. You have to do an art to it, but follow the video um, on there and you can, you can show you can make your own yeast. Um, without even having to pay or buy it. I know last the first lockdown, it was really hard to get hold of yeast, so to make your own sourdough was great. 
and uh, it takes a little bit of extra time, but we've got extra time during lockdown, so, so have a go. Um, right, so the next thing is we've talked about yeast, we've talked about biological raising agents, we've talked about making a dough. We now need to look at uh, refreshing your knife skills or making our tomato and onion topping to our pizza. Now, you can add other things to this. So I'm going to add today on mine. I've got some olives to put on top of my pizza as well. So I'm going to put some pizza, some nice olives on there. So we want to get some um, fruit and veg. You know, you need to have five fruit, five fruit and veg days. So we're going to put some tomatoes and onions, but we can get some more in there. I'm going to put some olives in. You might want to put um, other things on there. You might want to put some ham and pineapple on there if you wanted to put your pizzas. You might want to put some some have you fancy on there different types of types of things you might want to put on there you might put some roasted vegetables on there you can use it as a great way of using up leftovers from dinners from previous dinners so right great way of using up leftovers great way of reducing food waste by putting on pizzas if you haven't thought about doing that one before right so let's work on the toppings to our pizzas um, i'm just going to uh, quickly move around get a nice clean uh, work surface here i'm going to reduce this that we're going to be now showing you how to make the uh, onion, tomato and onion topping. So I just move my camera down there so you can see. We'll work surface that. There we go. Zoom in. There we go. So on my work surface here, I have got um, my, um, oops, move that on the side. Uh, I've got my onions. Ta da! Onions. Right, we're going to very quickly remind you on how to chop up an onion safely. So nice clean work surface. Now we've got the onions safely. How are we going to chop these onions? Um, safely. Well, we're going to be using the firstly the right sort of knife. So there are some sharp knives available out there. You may have in your kitchen at home, you might have a really small paring knife. This is a smaller one, this one here. So this is a paring knife. And this one is uh, like a chef's cook's knife. Now I'm going to try, I'm going to uh, say that you want to try and use the paring knife, which is a smaller one. But what I'll do for the showing you how to do this one, I will use a larger one just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. You're only going to need one onion here. And the, we're going to be using two types of cut. If you can remember um, two types, um, we've got oh, some shout outs. Yep, I can do some shout outs. Uh, we've got some shout outs there from uh, TGGS. <laughs> there we go. Um, from Angelina, she's uh, done a shout out on YouTube. That's fine. Um, if you want to do some shout outs, I've got a shout out to do already to all of those watching at TGGS um, who are watching from school. So, uh, Thumbs up to everybody watching from uh, TGGS from school. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Chloe Richardson wants a hello. Um, yep, we can do that as well. Um, any other shout outs you want to do on YouTube, that's fabulous. Um, we can do that one. Right, so onion. We're going to do two, three things we need to remember about onions, which is the ABC. Okay, ABC. What are the ABCs of cutting? Well, the first one is A for action. We need to hold our knives properly. Okay, so let's go back to me a minute. Um, when you are using knives, move back to me. Uh, when you're using knives, you need to be using um, the correct knife and you need to hold the knife correctly. You only need to be, if you're going, carrying the knife, you need to carry it with a point to the floor and the blade behind you. You only need want to be carrying one knife around at the same at any one time. When you're not using a knife, you need to make sure the knife is not at the front of your work area. It needs to be at the back of your work area. Okay, um, so you need to be making sure you're using it properly. You also, when you finish using it, you need to make sure that you wash it up properly. So when you come to washing it up, do not drop it into a washing up bowl. That's a no-no. Um, you need to keep hold of it. And then instead of using a cloth, you want to use a brush to brush away so you don't get any, uh, any chance to get any fingers near it. And then when you dry it, you do not want to use a tea towel to dry it. Leave it to drip dry on a drying rack so that, again, there's no chance of you cutting yourself. So a few actions. That's actions for a knife. Actions begin with an A. Um, that's your A. Um, B is the first cut we need to do on a food that isn't long and thin. And this onion is definitely not long and thin. So um, the first one cut is a begin to B, and it is using my hands and forefinger in a shape like that. What, what is that? What sort of cut would we use if I'm using my hands like that? Anyone want to say? We can see who's going to be fastest. YouTube or Talking Girls Grammar? Let's have a look. Who's going to be fastest? It is a bridge. Yes, we've got a few people coming in. Bridge, 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 bridge. This is our bridge cut. So just a reminder there, we're going to be putting our four thumb and forefinger around and creating a bridge, which we are going to cut through the middle of. So we're not going to end up cutting anywhere near our fingers. We're going to cut straight through the middle of that one all the way to the bottom. If you feel that you cannot do that one because it's the knife is too close to your you, you can always use one of these, which has got three bridges already, otherwise known as a fork. You can put that one into your onion. And then what you can do is you've got three bridges there and you can cut straight through the middle 
like that. So I'm going to do that. It's the first thing you need to do when you're bridging. Um, so I'm going to do that. Let's move the camera down so you can see what I'm doing on the board there. Let's have a look so you can see. There is my onion. I'm going to create a bridge using my thumb and forefinger, and then I'm going to cut straight through the middle. Now, to make this easier, so you can see, I'm going to use a larger chef's or cook's knife here, just so you can see what I'm doing as I cut through the middle there. Okay, so here we go. Just going to cut through, straight through the middle of it, straight to the bottom. Fabulous. Onion straight down. It's important that we put our onion straight down because the stuff that's going to make you cry is in the base of the onion just there. And we don't want to expose that because then that's going to release a gas. That gas is going to react with the air. That air, that gas in the air is going to form a mild oxide. It's going to oxidize. It's going to form mild, mild acids in the air that's going to be like a gas that's going to make you an irritant that's going to make you cry. So we're going to keep that area, that, those onions flat on the board as much as we can. Now, after we've done a, a bridge, we need to do the next sort of cut. And the cut involves me going like that with my hand, with my th thumb right behind. So I'm gonna push my thumb back. Make sure you're doing this, follow, do what I'm doing here. Thumb back, fingers over the top, and I'm gonna create for the next cut. What sort of cut is that? We've done A for action, B for bridge, C is for, what is this one for? Anyone have a go? That's it, it's a claw. Okay, so we're creating a claw, and then we're gonna put the blunt side of our knife, that's this side here, the blunt side, against my knuckle, and I'm going to slice the tops of my onions off. There we go. Slicing the top of that onion off. I'll show you on the other one as well. Slicing the top of the onion. Oops, it's a bit slidey. Don't worry. There we go. Slice the tops of my onion off. Not the bottoms. Why not the bottoms? Anyone want to know at home why, why wouldn't I cut into the bottom bits where the root is? What would it make me do? What would it make me do? It would make me cry. Cry, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting some emoji crying. We've got some emojis there. It's going to be crying. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be pulling back the skin, put our knives away. Always be safe. We put our knives down and we're going to now pull back the papery skin of our onions. Okay, so I'm just pulling that back. Can you see what I'm doing there? All the way to the foot or the base or to the root of the onion. There we go. And do the same on the other side. Pull that back. If the paper comes all the way off, don't worry. You don't pull it right way off because we don't want to disturb the base of the onion where it's going to make us cry. I'm just going to pull that back, that. There we go. Oops, I'm going to take, take off the first layer of skin as well. There we go. So I'm just going to pull that back to expose the part of the onion. Do you see what I'm doing there? So I pulled that back from that onion. There we are, that part, onion half. Pulled it back. Right. Fabulous. Now, when you do that, I'm going to put this one to the side for a minute. When you do that one, you will see that you also expose the next cutting line. So if I show that up to the camera, you can see those lines that are running down there. That's the next cutting line that we're going to use. So with um, that flat on the board, I'm going to pick up my knife skin. My knife is already safely stored at the end of my chopping board, not at the uh, not anywhere that's going to cut me. So if it's safe, safely, that's the action. After the action, I'm going to do the first of my cuts which again, which will be forming my thumb and forefinger around to form a bridge. So I'm going to form a bridge. I'm going to cut down as many of those as I can using there. But I'm not going to go all the way to the base. I'm not going to go to the base here. I'm going to go down about three quarters of the way down. Don't go all the way to your thumb and forefinger. You just want to get safely. So I've cut lots of lines down there. Then I'm going to do my claw, thumb right back, fingers over the top, and I'm going to slice the other way. And can you see what I'm doing there? I'm just going to slice like a noughts and crosses. I've gone one way. I'm now going to go the other. So I'm just slicing all of that onion down, teeny tiny small. And I'm not going to go right to the base because I will... Any messages down there? What am I going to do if I go all the way to the base? Cry, that's it, I'm gonna cry if I go all the way to the base. So um, I'm not gonna go all the way to the base. You can see there, what I can do with that base is I'm now gonna compost that, or even you could put it in some water and try and grow another onion. But I'm gonna compost that, put that in my compost bin over there. I'm gonna do the same with the other onion half. Let's move that to the side. I'm gonna do the same. So I've got bridge first. I'm not gonna go all the way to the out. And then I'm gonna go claw the other way. Thumb right back, remember that thumb, put it right back. And I'm now gonna slice those ones up well. Now, again, if you don't feel safe that, you can actually use your fork as a claw and you can use that and move it back as well. So there's an alternative there if you don't feel safe. 
I'm not going to go all the way to the outside, all the way to the end. Just going to again compost that for later on. So I've now got my onion ready to go in there. Now I'm going to put in with my onion. I'm going to put in some garlic. So there's my onion ready to go. This next one is garlic. So here's my garlic. You see that? Let's put this onion. Put the knife away. Uh, garlic. So inside my garlic, I will have cloves. So probably about 12 or so cloves in there. So what I do is I crush this, push it down, turn it, crush it, and I'll end it up with seeing the cloves that are inside. Here are my cloves inside. And you can see the cloves they look like um, orange segments here. Here we go. There's my orange segments. And there's a clove of garlic. What I'm going to do with the clove of garlic is I'm going to do, I'm going to use, use that paring knife, that small one now. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to do um, just top and tail it. So I'm just going to use a little teeny tiny little claw with my thumb, right back. We top it and tail it, take the tops off like we did before. And I'm going to then peel off all of that paper. So I'm going to peel off all of the paper, like with the onion, all that skin off the outside. There it goes. That's all being peeled off here. There we go, all, all of it's off. I've topped and tailed it, my uh, garlic. I've peeled off the um, outside. Now I need to start chopping it. So what I'm gonna start with, as before, I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny little bridge, a teeny, tiny little bridge, the tiniest of little bridges here. So I'm gonna do a tiny little bridge. I'm gonna slice down there, nice and small. I'm probably only gonna get about two, maybe three little slices on there. You will see that on the camera, fabulous. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tiny little claw. A tiny, I've done a little tiny little bridge, a tiny little claw. So I'm going to again use my thumb. It's going to go right the way back. And I'm going to do a teeny tiny one on there. I'm going to slice the other way now. So I'm just slicing the other way. There we go. Teeny tiny, 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 tiny ones. Now we're going to chop this one up. Now, for anyone who can remember, using bridges and claws like that, so you cut one way and then cut the other. We can mix all those together. Cutting one way and cutting the other forms a six-sided cuboid. That six-sided cuboid, I'll show you up on the camera there, uh, if it had dots on it and it was played in a board game, would be called a, let's see who's gonna, who's gonna say, write it down first. YouTube or Talking Girls Grammar? Dice, is a dice, so we got a dice there. Um, and that one is a dice cut, so we've dice cut those. Now, depending on whether your dice is big or small, so you can have big or small dices, um, is what we call, when we get to GCSE, two different words, there's a brunoise, or a Macedoine, and that, that depends whether it's a smaller dice or a larger dice. And um, I don't mind whether you want to go small or large with this one, depending on how much you love or dislike your garlic and onion, um, but uh, maybe you want to go really, really teeny tiny small. But I've got my there, my onion and my garlic ready to go. What I need to do though, is before I put these in my pe on my pieces, I'm going to soften these up. I'm going to do what we call saute. So let's come back to me here. Um, so I'm just going to um, saute these ones off. So we're on step number. You look on your yours there. Oh, look, so I've got to see someone's got a nice little friend with them in the kitchen there. Lovely. Uh, so we've got there sauteing. We're at number seven now. So those onions and those onions and garlics that are, we've got here. Can you see that onion and garlic that I've got on my board there? That onion and garlic is now going to be sauteed off. I'm going to soften those ones in a frying pan um, before we put them on top of our pizzas and we mix them with our tomatoes. Now, while we're going to go over there, I did say I'd show you how to make um, something like one of these um, passatas or um, a puree here. So I should I show you how to make those ones. So what you can use is if you haven't got any of those, and that's the I know we're in lockdown larder situations, so you want to make, want to make your own sauces, you, but you might have some um, fresh tomatoes. So I've got some fresh tomatoes here. Uh, here we go, some tomatoes. So we've got some tomatoes here. Um, let's, uh, now obviously you need to be thinking of um, your food miles with this one. Um, uh, they're not fresh from the UK at the moment. Um, these ones are from Europe. So they think about where you get this one. But um, on what sort of tomatoes? You want to try and use the most expensive tomatoes you can. Sometimes you can get those ones that look more like rugby balls. They're brilliant ones, uh, brilliant tomatoes doing this one. Though. But I've just got some, some tomatoes here. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make the tomato sauce at the same time. You don't need to. You can just use the canned stuff, which is what we're going to be using. But I just thought I'd show you how it's made while we're over there. So what we're going to do is we get um, the tomatoes and we make a little incision in them to make them into a, make like a little cross in the top. 
OK, so I'm going to use a rounded butter knife there. And I'm just going to make an incision so in the top there and one the other way and make it into a cross. You don't need to do this one, OK? I'm just going to show you this to show you what's going on while we're over at the hob. So there we have. Um, I've just made an incision there, a little cross on the top. You might just be able to see that one on the camera. I'm going to do the same with the other one as well. And what I'm going to do, here we go. You can see that one on the top there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, I'm going to de-skin the tomato, de then seed it, and then chop it up. And that's what you've got there, which is cook up. Um, I'm going to cook up the tomato at the same time. So how do you do that one? Well, you get your tomatoes like that, which you've got your little crosses on the top. You can see those ones, the little crosses on the top. And what you do with that is we're going to put those in some boiling water. And when they're in the boiling water, um, what will happen is um, the skins will just literally fall off. And then we can take them off, put them in some cold water, chop them up. So I can show you that while we're over at the hob. I'll just like quickly show you that one about how to make the sauce at the same time, which is quite interesting. So, um, so let's go and do this one. Um, let's move over to the kitchen. I'm going to just move the cameras over so uh, you can see what I'm up to. Let's move the camera over there. And zoom in so you can see. There we go. I'm just going to zoom in to where we're going to be on the camera there. So you can see what's going on. Good. Let's move the other camera over so you can see where we're up to on the kitchen there. Good news. Okay. Um, let me go over with my board and we'll go and then. Get these ones ready to cook. Okay, here we go. So I've got uh, here um, my tomatoes that I just uh, pierced before, and I've got my onions and garlic there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to soften the onion and garlic before we put them on the tomato, tomato base of our pizza. But I'm also going to show you how to make that sauce at the same time. So here I've got my pan. Which I'm just going to put my tomatoes in. If you, you just need to, I'm just going to show you that. I'm just going to boil some water up there. Let's get into my pan with that. So my onion and garlic, which is what you are doing, I'm going to put the onion and garlic into a pan. There we are. Onion and garlic. It's going to go straight into the pan. Okay. Put the spatula there. I'm going to turn the heat on. Remember, you are always in charge of the heat. So I've got the heat on. If you feel that it's getting too hot or it's spitting, turn the heat down. So I've just got that on the top of the heat. I don't need any oil because I'm going to keep moving in the pan, what we call sauteing, okay? So this is not frying it with uh, oil, we're not turning them brown, we're just going to just very soften them down. Just, uh, just a little bit soften them down. What should happen to the onions and garlic? They'll start to turn a little bit translucent, a bit like tracing paper. So we're going to soften those ones down. We're not actually going to um, brown them off and cook them. So we don't need to put any oil in. So I'm going to keep stirring them. Now, talking about stirring them, I'm using a wooden um, spatula there. I could use a wooden spoon um, as well um, because I'm using a non-stick pan here. If I wasn't using, if I was using like a steel pan, um, that you could use like a metal, a metal uh, one to turn it. But um, I'm using or but because I'm using a black non-stick pan, you can see that there it's black, it's not silver. I'm using a wooden one. I could use a rubber one as well, or a plastic one. So those rubber ones to do it. Just stirring this one in the pan, softening that one up. Now while we're doing that one, I just thought for a bit of fun I'd show you how the tomato puree is made. So two tomatoes in there, bit of boiling water, in they go, boom, they're in there. Boiling water goes in. Fabulous, onto the heat. There we go. There we go. Just going to put a lid on that so that cooks a little bit quicker. Right, onion and garlic are nearly softened. It's smelling lovely. Now, while we're on the case of looking at safety with a hob, can you make sure that the pan handles? are not sticking over the side. If the pan handles stick over the side, you're likely to knock yourself and you might hurt yourself, okay? So try and make sure your pan handles are uh, to the side and not like that, sticking out. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna knock into it when you go into it. So okay, so I'm gonna leave that one just to the side. I'm gonna leave that one up to the side there. So there's no chance of you knocking it into any of those. Just keep stirring them in the pan, what we call saute. It's like dancing in the pan. It comes from the French word there. Keep those moving. There we go, they're softening off nicely, they're not browning, they're just softening off 
you want to see under the heat. Remember, you're in charge of the heat, the, the heat is not in charge of you, so if you think it's getting too hot, take it off the heat, reduce the heat down if you want. There we are, it's lovely, smelling gorgeous. Onion and garlic. Good. Okay, that's that one done. And the tomatoes are nearly done as well. I'm just going to turn those down to a slow simmer. So there's my uh, my onion and garlic ready to go. I'm going to put those in with the tomato sauce now. So let's uh, get the tomatoes there ready to go. And then we can start putting all of this together. And while that's cooking, we'll just show you how to also make... Oops, I'm just going to put that one, pull those ones out. Um, while they're while they're um, cooling down, and while we do the tomato, we'll and we'll get the pizza all put together, and then we'll work on the dough balls after that. So that's looking lovely. Let's get that one into a butcher. Bring that one back onto the work surface. Fabulous. Uh, okay. Just going to bring the chopping board. Actually, do that. Bring the chopping board over at the same time. All right. So I'm going to go and get those tomatoes. I'm just going to show you what de-skinning a tomato looks like when you're doing this one. Let's get a small bowl to put those in. So you can see. Okay, so you've got a small bowl there. I'm just going to get those tomatoes out. They're just boiling up well. Now to get the tomatoes out, I'm going to use a spoon. I'm going to get those ones out of my pan so you can see what they look like. Oh, okay, they're just, they're just coming off really, really well. Now, uh, when I in the, put them in now, I need to cool them down because I'll be chopping them up. So I'm going to put some ice cold water into my pan. There we go. Ice cold water into there. Let's get our tomatoes out. Lovely. They're cooked, and the skin is just coming off really well. Really, really well. It's just coming off there. Let's get those ones. Put them into cold water. Switch the heat off. Now, you might just be able to see on the camera now, the skin is just falling straight off the tomato, and that's how you skin a tomato. You could leave the skins on if you wanted to when you're doing this one. And you see the skin's just falling off those, so that's how you skin a tomato. I just thought I'd show you that one while we were over there at the same time, so you can see what we do. Okay, let's uh, come back around to the screen. Okay. See now, yeah, so you can see what's, what's going on with the recipe. Okay, turn the camera around. There we go. All right, so back to me. What we've got here now is we've got the onion and garlic, which have been sauteed off, ready to go. And what I'm going to do is now put those in with the tomato, and then we're going to mix those in a bowl. And then what we're going to do, you tin tomatoes. Yeah, I'm using tin tomatoes as well. I just thought I'd show you, just show you how they get to the tin tomato stage. So what they do is... Um, you can make your own tomato sauces. So what that was, was I, I just showed you there, for the, just as while we were over there at the same time, how to de-skin and cook a tomato. So you can see those skins just pulled off where I chopped it. And I can just now peel this one, all of that skin off. If I wanted to make my own tomato sauce from scratch or my own chopped tomato, peel that one all off. Then you cut it off, cut it up, take all the, the um, hard insides and seeds out, and you can just cook that one off and make your own tomato sauce. So just thought I'd show you how that happens while we were over there. But I'm gonna use some tin tomatoes just uh, for the ease now. I can use those ones later for dinner. Um, okay, so I've got my a bowl. I'm gonna put into them my bowl. I'm gonna put in there my um, onions and garlic. Can you see that there, my onion and garlic? I'm just gonna put those in there. Uh, in with my onion and garlic. I'm gonna mix in there. Oh, let's get all of that onion and garlic in there. Fabulous, it's all coming in. All of that onion and garlic off. It's, just, it's not really brown, it's just just all softened now, which is just how we want it. All combined, all softened up nicely. Fabulous. So I'll put that one in there for now. 
Fabulous. Right, next. Oops. Let's go with the, we've got our onion and garlic in there. I'm going to go with my uh, tomato. Now you can say you can use some tin tomato. You can use some passata. If you've got some of that, that would work. Or you can use some tomato puree. I'm actually going to combine a few of those. So what I'm going to do is, if I show you my, what I'm going to be doing here. Oops, there we go. So what I've got going on here is I've got a few of those things. So I'm going to mix those ones together. I'm going to be putting into here my tomato puree. So there's my tomato puree. I'm going to put in some a big lump of tomato puree, which is going to nicely thicken up my sauce. In that goes. A tablespoon is worth of that. In it goes. And then in with that, I'm going to put either, you can put in the chopped tomatoes, um, you can put in the passata. I'm going to put a bit of mixture of those, so I'm going to put a little bit of passata in there as well. Here we go. A little bit of passata in there. Fabulous. So we've got a little bit of my passata in. I'm going to pour a little bit of that passata. Oops, I'll show you on the camera so we can move that one down as well. You see what I've done there? So I've got in there the puree. I'm going to put a little bit of passata in there. You can just put some chopped tomatoes in there if you want to. And I'm going to stir all that through. There we go. So I've now got my onions, my garlic. If I want to, I can put a little bit of chop, chopped tomato in there instead. Tin chopped tomato. Can do. There we go. Do you use the entire can if you're using No, it half, half a can, half a can. So I'm just going to pour some of that in there. It'll keep in the fridge. And I'll put it into a bowl, another bowl and then keep that in the fridge. So I've got a mixture there. You can use any or all, or you can, in fact, you could even make your own if you wanted to. Tomatoes, like I said, show you your own tomato sauce there. I'm going to mix all of that together. Now, in with that tomato, I'm now going to be putting in an onion and garlic mix. I'm now going to put in there my herbs. So um, I could put, like I say, some dried herbs. So I've got some dried parsley there. If you want to put dried parsley in there, you can do. I've got some fresh parsley here. So I've got some fresh parsley here. I'm just going to chop up some fresh parsley. There is my chop to my parsley. I'm not going to use all the stalk. I'm just going to get some of those leaves off the end there. And then I'm going to chop those up. So let's get some leaves here. Get some leaves there. Just get some of those leaves. Nice bits of parsley. I love a bit of parsley on this. You can use a flat leaf parsley or a curled leaf parsley. Either either onto this one. You can use basil. So I've just got some parsley. I'm just going to chop that one up. You can use scissors if you want to. So just scissor snip them. So you can just chop them up like that. If you want to, I'm just going to use my knife. You do cross chop, or sometimes I know call this one a seesaw chop. Holding onto the end of the knife there on the blunt side. Just going to roll it over. You might even have a, a little chop, a knife guard, so a herb cutter yourself. So I'm just going to chop those ones up. There we are. You can see what I'm just doing there. So in the motion of the um, the curve of the the knife there, just chop that one. But again, you can use some scissors if you want to chop those up with that way. Just using alternative equipment, alternative ingredients that you've got all the time today. Okay, so I've got my herbs. They're going to go into the top there. Oh, look at that! It's already starting to look like the Italian colours there. You know, obviously, pizzas originating from Italy. You can see I've got the, the red, the green. We're going to put the white of the cheese in there on there as well later on. So I'm going to stir that through. It's looking beautiful. Um, I'm going to put some basil on there. I've got some fresh basil. Where's my fresh basil gone? I picked that earlier, didn't I? Right at the very beginning. Um, we've got that basil. There it is. So we've got that fresh basil that I picked earlier on today. I'm going to get that fresh fresh basil. I'm going to chop some of that. I'm going to, in fact, I'm literally going to use the scissors on this one, like I said before. You can use some scissors on there. Just going to chop that up teeny tiny small. I love basil. My favourite, favourite, favourite herb. Fresh basil. Oh, we've got huge, you used to see that right at the beginning when I was washing my hands. There was a massive basil plant we've got in the kitchen here. I absolutely adore basil. It's like licorice -y, sweet. Tastes like fruit pastels. Love it. Okay, I'm stirring all that through. There we go. Beautiful herby, tomato y, oniony, garlicky sauce there for the tops of our pizzas. 
Okay, I think we need to get our pizzas out. Um, time to time to get our pizzas out. Um, let's go and get our pizzas out from uh, there. They should be a little bit bigger now. When we got our sauce to go on the top, and we're going to grate some cheese to go on top of there as well. But we're going to roll that out. So let's get uh, let's get back to rolling out our bread dough and making our pizzas. Now we're not going to use all of the bread dough because we're going to keep some of that bread dough back for making our dough balls. So remember, we're making today used pizza bread and dough balls. So we're going to keep back some of that for um, for uh, for the dough balls. Okay. Um, now, just before we get there, you can need to make sure you've got a tray ready to go. Now, you might have a different sort of tray. So you might actually have a pizza tray. If you've got one of those, um, fabulous. Or if you haven't got one of those, you could use um, just a standard standard tray, baking tray there. And then I'm going to just put line that one with some paper. So I've got some paper there. I'm going to line that one with my scissors. There we are. So I'm just going to... Line this with some grease proof paper before we get our bread out, so that's all ready to go. So, we get everything ready. Okay, so I've got some grease proof paper on my tray. Now, you might have noticed from the recipe there, it does say you can make these into hearts. Um, now, you can make them into any shape you want to. You can make them into rectangles, you could make them into circles, you could um, make them into so you can make rectangle pizzas, you can make them circular pizzas, you can make them into heart shaped pizzas, you can make them into star pizzas, whatever shape you want with this one, they'll let you be as creative as you want. So we've got our tray lined, we've got our tomato ready to go. The only final thing we need to do is just need to grate our cheese. So if you can get your um, another bowl there with your cheese grater, we're going to just grate our cheese. There's our cheese grater, we're going to grate your cheese. Into there, so you, again, you can be using um, a dairy cheese, or you could be using um, a uh, vegan cheese. That's fine. Um, vegan block, and then we're going to get our bread out. So let's just get everything ready. So I'm just grating off my cheese there. And just see myself grating the cheese. Cheese, 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 cheese. Being grated, lots of cheese there. How much cheese? Well, I would say I think it was 50 grams of cheese. We said would be perfect for that one. So we're just going to grate that one. Down there, lots and lots of cheese. And um, what's the perfect sort of cheese? Good question. Well, I'm just using a, um, you can use a, uh, say a vegan cheese, which we use today, or you can use a cheddar cheese. Um, you can use a mozzarella. Mozzarella is beautiful because it's lovely and stringy, or a mozzarella alternative gives you that stringy effect to your, um, to your pizzas when you um, melt it's melted off when you cook off your pizzas. So any of those will do. Right, fabulous. So I've now got everything ready. I've got my tomato, I've got my cheese, I've got my tray that's been lined. I think we're nearly ready to go. So hopefully you're ready to go too. It's time to go and get our bread doughs. So let's go, go, go get our bread doughs and ready to go. Okay, so here is my bread dough. And ta-da! It's doubled in size, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Hopefully yours has too, as well. Um, uh, love to see some pictures. Have you got any pictures of, of what your bread doughs are looking like at home? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Lovely bread dough there. Yeah, loving that one. Any more? Any more photos of your bread doughs? Yeah, perfect. Looking good, looking good. So you've got stretchy gluten in there. It's filled with carbon dioxide from those little microorganisms, biological raising agents we call yeast. Fabulous. Uh, okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to turn that out onto our work surface. You might need a little bit of extra flour. Lovely, lovely photos of your work there. Um, so we're going to get a little bit of flour. I'm just going to dust my work surface with a little bit of um, flour here. There we go. I'm going to dust it with a little bit of flour. And if you've got a flour dredger, perfect. Otherwise, you're going to dust your work surface there with your flour. And we're going to turn out your dough onto your work surface. So I'm just gonna very gently, because we don't wanna lose all the air, I'm just gonna very gently ease that one or out. So don't be tempted to just drag it out and hurt hurt your wonderful dough. We don't wanna to, to be delicate as we can with our dough. We're just gonna let that very gently, I'm just very gently easing this out of the bowl. Very, very gently. Easing it out of the bowl. Whoa, look at that one. That one really has doubled in size there. You put that one somewhere nice and warm. I'm looking at some lovely photos here of them doubling in size. Some lovely ones there if you're cooking along at home. That's really great. 
Okay, so if I show you on what mine looks like now on the board, um, let me move the camera down so you can see that one. So uh, there we go. You see there on the board there? Hopefully you can. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see. There we go. So um, on the board there is my bread dough, which is doubled in size. It's a massive dough now, which is lovely. Just what we want to happen. It's actually completely filling the screen there. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to be making our pizzas into different shapes. And before we do that one, we need to cut a little bit off. We're going to cut a little bit off just so that we've got enough to make our dough balls. Now, how much do you want to chop off? Again, lovely pictures there. I can see. Yep. Thank you. That looks lovely dough there. Looking great on the screen there. Thank you. Um, so cut off as much as you want. Now, you might think, well, I want a massive pizza. And I don't really want very many dough balls, in which case just chop off a little bit there for your dough balls. And how much? Well, how big do you like your dough balls, really, I suppose? I'm going to cut off myself. I'm going to cut off about a fifth, I would say, maybe even less than that, maybe even a sixth worth um, to make my dough balls. So I'm just going to cut off there. So use a knife. I'm just going to gently cut all the way down. You see what I'm doing there? There we go. Cutting through. How many dough balls? You can make uh, four, five dough balls, but the more dough balls you make, the smaller your pizzas are going to be. Okay, so um, just be aware that if you make loads of dough balls, if you make like eight dough balls, you're going to have a teeny tiny pizza. Whereas um, I'm going to be just chopped off about a fifth or sixth, so I should be able to make about four or five dough balls and still make a, a massive pizza to go with it. So it's up to you how many dough balls. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave it entirely up to you. You might be somebody who loves pizza, but is not a fan of dough balls, in which case just chop off a small bit. Or if you love your dough balls more than your pizza, chop off a larger piece of your main original dough there. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna let you have a play with that one. So there we have my, my main pizza dough there. You can see that. And then here's my a piece that I've cut off there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave the piece I've cut off just back in my bowl. I'm going to put that one back in my bowl. There we go. And that can carry on proving a little bit while we get onto our pizzas. So there it is. So here's my pizza dough. It's, it's lovely as if someone's left their mic on there. So if you want to switch your mics off, there we go. So you can see my dough, dough there. And what I'm going to use now, you can use your fingers to squash it out if you want to. I've got a rolling pin here. Now, if you haven't got a rolling pin at home, don't worry because you can always use alternatives. So I've got my rolling pin here, which I'm going to roll it out. But if you've got um, an old cordial bottle, you can roll that one out. Um, you could even use the greaseproof paper to roll it out, make that into a rolling pin. We're all trying to find alternatives during lockdown, so let's have a think. If you, so if you've got a rolling pin, just use a piece of greaseproof paper to roll it out if you want to. Roll that one out. You're going to have a massive pizza here. Now you can say you can make it into whatever shapes you want to. If you want to make it into heart-shaped pizzas, let's have some fun with this. I've had all sorts being made before, rainbow pizzas. Um, um, I'm going to just show you a basic one, so you know how to make the basic one here. So I'm going to, because I'm going to be using this on my rectangular one, so I'm going to make this into a rectangular pizza. You just zoom that one out so you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, so we're just going to, oh, look at that. Someone, we've had delivery. Maybe that's a pizza delivery. Okay, so let me just have a look. Uh, yeah, this is being live. You can tell it's live. <laughs> got a delivery just coming at the front door. It's all right, my daughter's going to go down and get that one for me. Um, right, there we go. So we've got our pizza there, and you can see my rectangular pizza there. I'll zoom out one more for you. And there you can see that one on the screen there. Hopefully you can all see that one as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to... And how much do you need to roll it? Good question. So you need to roll it about a pound coin or maybe a little bit more than a pound coins, um, half a finger. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll, put my toppings onto this. So I've got my toppings there. So your tomato, I'm going to be putting my lovely tomato on the top. Here we go. And I'm going to use a spoon just to spread that all the way over the outside there. And again, if you want to make it bigger, you can make it bigger. Now, I've just made a fatal error there. What I need to do is before I put the topping on, and I knew I'd get it all sorted first, you need to put your pizza onto your tray. Because if you put the toppings on first, <laughs> you're going to end up being finding it very difficult to get it onto your tray. Good job I haven't got lots on there. There we go. So I've got it on my tray. There we go. Sorry about that. 
I'm being distracted by de delivery. And it wasn't a pizza delivery, but a delivery that's just turned up. What a point for an Amazon delivery to turn up. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just filling up my tray all the way to the outside there. And then I'm going to be putting my toppings on. There we go. Massive pizza for me. I use my fingers if I want to, rather than a rolling pin, all the way to the outside. And now toppings on the top. Don't go all the way to the outside because you don't want it to all come off, but go as close as you can. There we are, lots of tomato and onion and garlic all on there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. On it goes. Covering over what a chunky vegetables we've got there and the herbs we've got there. Fabulous. And if you want to put some more herbs on the top, some Italian seasoning or some of that, um, more fresh herbs on the top, you can. Or even dried herbs, just scatter some dried herbs on the top, you can do. Look at that. That is one chunky looking pizza. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. There we go. Nearly all done. And you can see that I need to get most of my topping on there. Not quite to the edge, very close to the edge there for one very chunky pizza. Okay, I'm gonna, I did say I'm gonna put a few little olives on mine as well, so I'm just gonna get some olives scattered on there. I'm just gonna tear up some olives to go onto the top of mine as well. Whatever you fancy to put on the top of you, maybe you're putting some ham and pineapple onto yours. Maybe you're putting some olives too. Maybe you've got some olives there to put on. If you've got some old roasted vegetables from the other night, if you wanna put any of those on the top, um, you can do, they, they work really nicely courgettes or aubergines or whatever you got make it a ham and pineapple make it a make it pepperami pipe pizza maybe you've got you've had chicken the other night you've got some chicken left in the fridge put some chicken on this one if you wanted to i don't know whatever you want to make this one i'm making it let you be as creative as you want here so i'm just going to be putting some some olives on the top of there beautiful i, might put, oh, I love that mushrooms mushrooms brilliant on there we get mushrooms a bit good, good topping for you for it there it is there is my pizza. Now, my cheese. I've got my cheese there. Cheese on the top there. There we go. All the way on. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wonderful. Look at that. Lovely, lovely, big, chunky pizza there. Lots of cheese on there. And that's a good balanced, balanced meal, this one. You've got your carbohydrates on the top, which is uh, sorry, the bottom there with your bread base. You've got your fruit and vegetables in the middle there. You've got a little bit of um, fat and a little bit of dairy on the top. You might have put some, some protein or some protein alternatives. You might put mushrooms, which is a high protein, uh, um, or you might have put on there some chicken or ham. There we go. Pizza done. Into the oven that goes. And then we're straight onto the dough balls. Um, let's get those ones into the oven. Don't get them putting them into the oven. You need to wear, what do you need to wear, everybody? If you're putting things in and out of the oven, you need to wear oven gloves. Okay, so I just put my just got my oven gloves ready to go for later. There they are, oven gloves. Right, next to me. Uh, let's just go back to me. Um, okay, so we're nearly there now. We're just going to go straight onto dough balls. Well, we've still got that dough ready, and we're going to go straight into dough balls. And they're going to cook a lot quicker because they're going to be a lot smaller than the pizza. So um, don't worry about that. I'm going to get those ones in there. Let me just get onto the board and show you the, the recipe for the dough balls. Very quick and simple for this one. Um, okay. We've got about 15 minutes left to do this one, so that's fine. We are okay with that. Dough balls. Dough balls on the screen there. Um, very simple for this one. The extra, roll out the extra into a long sausage. So let me get the extra there. Here it is. There's my dough, my extra dough um, that I chopped off from my pizza. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll that one out into um, sausage. Let me show you on the on the screen there. Let me um, zoom in so you can see. There we go. Um, so let me just show you the camera there. I'm going to roll this one into a long sausage. So I'm just rolling this one out into a long sausage. There we go. Long sausage it is. Ooh, I'm about to I'm going to make it into a ball again and then roll it out again. I'm going to roll it into a, now I'm going to roll it out into a ball. Roll it out into a sausage. Stretch it out. There we go. You can see what I'm doing there. Just rolling that one out into a long sausage there. Perfect. Wonderful. That's been rolled out. Now what I'm going to do is pick up some of the parsley there. Don't worry about that. Some of the herbs. 
So I've got that into the long sausage there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop this one out into small balls. So uh, let's just chop this one into small balls evenly. So I've got four there. You might have loads more. And I'll roll them all up in my hands. And I've got my dough balls there. There we go. Roll them all up. Lovely little dough balls. There we go. You can see what we're doing there. And then we've got some nice little dough. But try and make them as even as possible. The reason we need to make them as even as possible is that you do not want uh, one of them to be burnt, one of them to be overcooked, and you only be able to eat the two. You want to be able to eat them all. So try and make them as even sized as you can. That one's a little bit smaller. I'm going to take a little bit off that one and add that one to there. So try and make them as even as you can. And I know we've only got uh, 15 minutes left of the lesson, but don't worry. These don't only take them. Uh, a few minutes to cook these ones, so don't worry about that. Okay, so I've got my little dough balls. You can see them all there on the screen there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get some um, something to paint, brush them with. We're going to melt some 30 grams of butter. And in with the 30 grams of butter, we're going to be also putting in some garlic and some more parsley, and we're going to make a little sauce. So there's your garlic dough balls. I'm going to put those onto another little tray. So I've got a little tray here. I'm going to put those ones into the oven to cook. So put them onto a little tray and get them into the oven. So let me just uh, put them on my tray. A little tray here. They are going to go into the oven now. Dough balls. So I'm not going to put the garlic. Let's go back to me. Um, so I'm not putting the I'm not putting the garlic in them. We're going to brush the garlic over the top of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and put these ones into the oven. So I've got my little garlic dough balls. I'm going to put those garlic dough balls into the oven. And we go and put those in. And don't forget what you need when you put them in and out of the oven. You need oven gloves. So I've got my oven glove on. This is going to go into the oven along with pizza. Fabulous. Now, while they're in the, pe the oven, we're going to work on a nice little sauce here to go um, with this one. So I've got my little bowl here. And what I'm going to do in my little bowl, here's my little bowl, I'm going to put in this bowl, I'm going to be making up um, the sauce to brush over it. Um, so now, while they're cooking, you need to think about how you're going to brush them over. So what I've suggested is that you use a, get a pastry brush, which looks something like this. There we go, a pastry brush. And we're going to be brushing the garlic, butter, all over them with a little bit of chopped up parsley, if you've got that one, or dried parsley, all over the top of them. And this is going to be really nice. Finish them and they will be garlic dough balls. Perfect. Um, okay, so what do we need to do for that one? I say you can use a pastry brush. Um, you could also use a very clean <laughs> paintbrush. Um, so I've got actually a paintbrush here. You could use that, that would work just as well. Um, or maybe a paintbrush you haven't used yet would work really, really well as well so for our dough balls. Um, so let's uh, let's think about the garlic for that. So we've got our, say, a bowl, we've got our paintbrush to go in there. What do we need to be putting in there? Well, um, we need to be getting some. Um, butter and some garlic cloves and we're going to melt these ones off so in my bowl I'm going to get some more garlic so I've got some more garlic 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 here and again you can use um, frozen garlic if you've got some um, frozen garlic and you want to use that if you haven't got fresh garlic that will be fine I'm going to use a bit more of my parsley so here is my parsley as well so I need some parsley um, in this one I'm going to use a little bit of that butter or like I say the vegan and plant-based alternative to butter and we're going to use some of that. So we can either use the, um, I've got some plant-based alternative there, or you can use some dairy butter, use this one. Um, you've got your parsley, and then, like I say, you've got your garlic. Now, again, you can use, if you haven't got fresh garlic, you can use, um, I've got some frozen garlic, or you can use some garlic um, powder if you wanted to use that. Um, but I'm going to have a go and use um, the fresh garlic that we have here as well. Let me get that fresh garlic. About to there we are. Fresh garlic. Okay, so um, let's go through and put all this together. The first thing you need is 30 grams of butter. So 30 grams of butter. Now an easy way to remember this, if you haven't got scales at home, I'm going to use a little scale, but if you haven't got scales at home to measure that out, on the outside of these packets, they do actually have the measurements on the, on the butters as well. So you can measure it out roughly there, but you're looking at 30 grams. 30 grams of butter looks alike. Let me show you. You can do this in spoons, so you've got this ready to go for you. Here's 
Not a great deal. So you're looking at three teaspoons. Yeah, three teaspoons of butter. So, um, so you can use uh, teaspoons, and I'm using three of those in there to give me my, my give me my um, thirty grams. So about a teaspoon of butter is is a uh, ten grams. So I've got thirty grams of butter in there. Can you see that there? Thirty grams of butter in there. The butter, and in with that, I'm going to put in some garlic. So what I'm going to do with the garlic this time is I'm going to grate some garlic in. So I'm going to break open the garlic. Let's break open that garlic clove. There we go. So I said to just give that a crush. There's the garlic cloves inside. I'm going to do exactly like we did with the previous garlic. So there's my little garlic clove. I'm going to top and tail it. There's the garlic clove, which I've topped and tailed. And again, if you don't want to use this one, you can use you can use frozen garlic. You can use garlic powder if you wanted to, but I like to use fresh garlic if I can, if you can get hold of it. So there's garlic. And what I'm going to use now is I'm going to use the very finest part of my cheese grater. You see that there? And I'm going to grate the garlic. Be very careful not to grate your fingers. So if it gets close to your fingers, stop. I'm going to grate the garlic into my bowl with my butter. So I'm just grating that one in there while my dobles do. So you've got tiny little grates of garlic going on in there. You could also chop the garlic up if you feel safer doing that, but I've got the garlic, there we go, and grated garlic in there. You get all that grated garlic in there. It's beautiful, it smells delicious. I'm gonna probably do a couple of cloves. Let's do a couple, another clove there. The top, tail my garlic. So I'm just gonna peel the paper off. And then again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grate that garlic into my bowl. Here we go. So using the finest side, I'm gonna use a little, tiny little piece of garlic and I'm gonna just grate that garlic into, and again, be very careful with cheese graters not to grate fingers. And in that's gonna go, all of that garlic in there. Now hopefully you can see that on the board. Let's show you on the camera there. So what I've got in there, so you can see that there. I've got grated garlic. So you can see there. Can you see that one there? No, you can see that one. Good. I uh, grated garlic in there and the butter in my bowl. Now the final thing that's going to go into that one is going to be some, as well as chopped or grated garlic, is going to be my parsley. And again, if you can either use a dried parsley if you want to. So we've got some. Um, here we go. Some dried parsley. You can go into this one if you wanted to put dried parsley or you can go fresh parsley. I'm gonna put cooking some fresh parsley into this one again. So I've got my fresh parsley. And then again, you don't need to use knives to chop this one. You can just use a scissor snip. So I'm just gonna use a scissor snipping with that one. In goes, just chopping that up, teeny tiny small. In is my parsley. And I'm just gonna chop, 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 scissor snipping. In they go, straight into there. In it goes, in with my butter and my garlic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt the whole lot. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, I could do this one in a saucepan, which I'm going to, or I could actually just put this in the microwave if you wanted to. Microwave, 30 seconds, and you've got yourself some garlic butter. So butter, garlic, parsley in there, all chopped up nicely. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take that over. And again, if you want to, this is, I put it into a microwavable dish, so I can microwave that one. Or I can just empty all that into a saucepan, melt all that off, and then I'm going to paint that onto my, um, I'm using my paintbrush, my other pastry brush, I'm use a pastry brush. Paste that onto the top of my garlic dough, on my dough bills to give them my garlic dough balls. Right, uh, let's go and melt that one um, uh, over there. Let's go back to the kitchen. Let's go around. Right, okay. Sorry, can we? Sorry, someone just said something there. I couldn't quite catch that. The temperature is supposed to be for the pizzas. Sorry, oh, the pizzas. The pizzas will take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how the size of your pizzas and whether you, whether uh, how much toppings you put on them. You're waiting for them to go golden brown. So if you've done a large pizza, um, my pizza is, let's have a look. My pizza takes, it's gonna be about another 10 minutes for mine. Mine's a large pizza, so about 20 minutes for the larger pizzas, and for the smaller ones, um, you're looking at reducing the time down. So it depends on how thick or how big they are, but about 20 minutes is a good good idea as well. 
Right, so I've got my garlic, my I've got my garlic, garlic, parsley, and butter in there. I'm just going to put that into a saucepan. Let's get a, let's get a saucepan. Use that one. So I'll use a saucepan. In there goes my butter, my garlic, and my parsley. All of that's going to go into my saucepan. I'm just going to very quickly melt all of that off. There we go. Garlic's in there. All that garlic and parsley smells gorgeous. There we go. That's just melting off. Wooden spoon, stir that up. There we go. Melting off nicely. So I've got my garlic in there, I've got my parsley in there. Um, and like I said, what I'm doing now is I'm just melting all of that off. Um, and then I'm going to paint perhaps that over the top of my dough balls that are currently looking in there, cooking beautifully in there in the last couple of minutes. Um, right. Let's move that one over there so you can see what I'm doing. Fab. Um, so you should be all at that same stage now. So we've got garlic dough balls, pizzas, nearly ready, nearly ready, butter, just melting off. Yeah, that's looking good. Wonderful. Yep. Yeah. All done. So I've got in there, switch the heat off. Got in there, I'm going to just bring that over to the camera so you can see. Let's move that down so you can see in there. So what I've got in there is I've now got the uh, garlic, the parsley, and the butter all melted off ready to go. Fabulous. Let's go back to me. Okay, I'm back to the board. Okay, pretty right. We are nearly there. So what we've got now is we've got the stage there, last few minutes now. We've got everything ready to go. I've got my uh, garlic butter ready to go onto my dough balls, my pizza, be ready to come out in about the next next four or five minutes next four minutes so you should be ready just for the end of the lesson there um, my pizza will be ready my dough balls will be ready and i'm going to paint those with the garlic butter so sprinkle over the garlic and the herbs all over the top because it says there on the screen um uh, and that's what we're going to do so i'm going to they're actually going to bake them in advance i used to brush brush them first and then bake them, but actually I feel that it's nicer now to bake them and then brush them. Um, so either either, if you want to, to brush them with the garlic butter and then put them back in the oven for another few minutes, you can do. I'm gonna bake them until they're golden brown. How long do you need to bake your dough balls? Again, it's gonna depend on the size of dough balls that you've made. If you've made really big dough balls, they're gonna take an extra few minutes to cook. But the, the idea is you're looking for these to be golden brown. Now, how can you taste where the bread's done? Well, the good say is it's golden brownness on the outside, which is what we call at GCSE, something called dextrinization. It means the long chain uh, poly polysaccharides called starch on the inside the bread will start to break down into simpler sugars, which we call dextrins, and that gives your bread um, this this wonderful golden brown colour, so that golden brown colour on your bread, that's dextrinization. That's what you want to happen on your dough balls. Okay, so you want it to be turning just that browny colour. That fresh bread does turn into beautiful. Um, it also gives smells off and all sorts, and you've got proteins in there and sugars that gives you a Maillard reaction. Oh, no. um, so it's well, uh, the GCSE, we go to all this in a lot more detail. What makes your bread rise? How do you get the perfect colour? All this sort of thing we talk about at GCSE. It's really exciting. Food science. Blowing stuff up as well. Love it. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for them to go golden brown. Now, while we're waiting for them to go golden brown, let me tell you about the most important thing of the day in the last few minutes. Um, I need to just very quickly show you this, and that is what's on the board at the moment. That is about washing it up and getting ready to uh, clean up, okay? So really, really important. A few things you need to remember about washing up and cleaning up today. First one, your knives. Make sure your knives are the first thing you wash up. Make sure you carry them correctly to your washing up area. Make sure you don't drop them in the washing up bowl. So get some hot soapy water as much uh, as hot as you can. Lots of soap in there um, and you need to wash them up. 
When you're washing it up, don't use your uh, dishcloth. Use a brush if you can to brush away. Don't drop it in the bowl. Um, then when you finish uh, washing it with a brush, then leave it to drip dry at the back of your dry, uh, dry, dry area, unless you're putting it in the dishwasher, I suppose. Um, so that's the first thing you do. And any other sharps after that. So after that, you want to be thinking about other things that are sharp as well, um, such as your cheese grater. And again, be careful when washing that one up. Then you can start with the other things. Be careful when you're stacking stuff up, when you're drying it, so you don't overstack it so it doesn't slip off and hurt yourself. Okay, because you've got saucepans and frying pans and all sorts of data to, to wash up. Um, when it comes back to your work surface here, your work surface has got flour on it. So don't put hot soapy water straight onto the flour and work surface because you're going to end up on well, water and flour, that gluten and gliding. What are we going to make? We're going to make gluten. You're going to have a very sticky work surface. So before you start cleaning down your work surface, wipe down all of the flour into a bowl um, and then take that away and put it and just dispose of it in your food waste, okay, before you start adding water. Otherwise, to say, it gets too sticky. So make sure you're washing down properly, cleaning up with a clean, dry tea towel until the person who's supervising is happy that you are ready to clean up and be done. Uh, right. Uh, girls are talking, girls grammar. Thank you very much. You've been brilliant. I'm just going to go and get, get my pizza out and double so you can show you what you can do. And so have you been on YouTube? I know that's been a long two hours where we've been doing lots of different things today. Let me, while you start to clean up, go and get mine out of the oven, show you how I finish off my dough balls. Um, and then uh, then we, we're ready to go. Just let me go and grab those from you from there now um, and finish those ones off. So we have got, let me grab those out of the oven. Using oven gloves, they're just these oven gloves. Here we go. Here's my oven gloves. Fabulous. Oh, these dough balls are looking very amazing. And so is that pizza. Right, so dough balls here. The last few minutes, here's my dough balls. Can you see those ones on there? Golden brown, golden brown dough balls. Beautiful golden brown dough balls. Now what I'm going to do is while they're still hot, I'm going to go and get my paintbrush. It's not really a paintbrush. I'm going to get my paintbrush and I'm going to, oh, in fact, I could use this one because I've actually used a clean one. I'm now going to be brushing those ones. Where are we? There you go. I'm going to brush those ones with my um, lovely garlic butter, with all of the, those herbs and garlic and parsley all over the top there while they're hot. These ones are going to be beautiful. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. These look delicious. Girls, uh, everyone who's watching at home, there we go. Uh, there we go. They are my garlic dough balls. They have got garlic on them. They have got, uh, they are looking beautiful. They are hot, but they are garlic dough balls and they are smelling of, oh, they smell of garlic. They, they, are, they just smell gorgeous. Okay, so I'm just going to put a load and put even more garlic on those. I can tell you what, you can't go wrong with a bit more garlic on that, a bit more garlic butter all over that. Oh, look at them. They're just tasting divine. Right, so there's my shiny brown garlic dough balls looking amazing. My pizza, let me go and get the pizza out for you so you can see how that looks too. Looking wonderful as well. Let's get those again. And this. Is my pizza done? There we go. One pizza for you all. I've got a pizza. I've got my garlic dough balls. There we go. Pizza and garlic dough balls. Fabulous. Hopefully yours looks just as good. I'd love to see pictures of it. Uh, if you're watching Talking Girls Grammar School, don't forget to put your pictures um, in the Teams chat. That would be fabulous. If you're watching on YouTube, please email me through any photos. I'd love to see what you've been cooking and where you've been cooking from today. Thank you ever so much, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Be good. Be safe. Take care of yourselves and keep baking. Thank you very much, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye, everybody.